Welcome to this video in which I am going to present a paper entitled Most Use ICT Methodologies for Student Learning in Erasmus Plus Projects Related to E-Learning, based on a research work that is being carried out within the University of Salamanca PhD program on education in the knowledge society with the mentoring and supervision of Francisco José García Peñalbo. Let's start with a few information relating to the investigation. Through this research work, we are looking for the most outstanding educational practices that have worked adequately in a group of European projects that are catalogued as a good practice or success story and linked with e-learning and information and communication technologies, ICT. The results obtained so far in those aspects related to the methodologies used with the students are analyzed in the following slides, in which the research methodology, the response rate, the main results got, and the conclusions are exposed. Regarding the methodology for this research, it follows the guidelines specified in systematic reviews of our research projects which provides an overview of the current trends and identify the lacks and opportunities to define new advances in the area of research. Besides, they provide the possibility to compare between close projects and get a picture of the evolution of technological ecosystems in the field. The procedure implies four stages. Study definition, screening definition, project selection, and analysis and presently we are undertaking the analysis phase through the survey designed to collect information for that is more detailed on key aspects of the projects in relation to the degree of success and the ICT tools use. We go on to review how the survey design has been made and the questions that are the subject of this presentation. The development of the survey has been based on theories of questionnaire design from different publications. It is important to take into account different types of open and closed questions, the way of writing the questions in a clear language, grouped and in order, a number of questions between 20 and 30, and the time devoted to fill in the survey between a quarter of an hour and one hour most. Different models have been reviewed to try to elaborate the survey, which has finally resulted in a maximum length of 21 questions, with the cutmost and open of questions for an average time of 20 minutes. The survey is divided in six sections. The first one is aimed at identifying the project with the sole purpose of being able to contact afterwards for an interview. The second is aimed at global aspects that have favored the projects being classified as a good practice or success story. The third section has to do with the students and ICT tools used in the teaching processes with them. The fourth is focused on collecting information related to teachers and ICT. The fifth is devoted to other aspects of the project related to the use and sustainability of results achieved from the project, among other things. And the final section is oriented to collect the main conclusions. This paper and presentation our focus on the results obtained with the third section of the survey. The third section of the survey is comprised of three questions in relation with the students and ICT. What educational level are the students who have participated in the project? What ICT tools does the project use to improve student learning? What type of ICT devices have the students used in the project? Regarding the screening, project selection and response rate, the starting point was 1,000 
144 projects that matched the first three requirements linked with the term learning, labeled as a good practice or success story, and of key actions one and two, of which 256 did not have any educational centers, and with 39 that was not possible to find an email. Hence, the total amount of which institutions contacted were 849, of which 187 have completed the questionnaire satisfactorily. Therefore, the response rate has been of 22%, that is a good result in order to gather useful information on good practices. As regards to the results obtained, the following slides present those related to students. First, the educational fields most represented in the projects analyzed have been secondary education and vocational education and training, training followed by the university and adults. Second, the three most prominent digital tools are making presentations, development, of basic uh, digital skills, use of resources to access web information. Third, the most common devices used using the Erasmus Plus projects analyzed are laptop, desktop computer, and smart mobiles. Fourth, in relation to the use of ICT tools and devices by educational field, there are small variations in, ter in terms of the importance given to them in each field. You can see it uh, on this slide, on the data presented here, and uh, in this uh, slide. And in conclusion, mm, there are some variations uh, in the use of ICT tools and, and devices uh, between f educational fields. The most uh, represented educational field is uh, school education, that comprise early childhood education, primary education, secondary education, and baccalaureate. The ICT tools most uh, used by students are those related to office automation, uh, management, basic skills, as well as the use of network resources and platforms for collaborations. And as regards to ICT devices, both laptops and desktops stand out. The next stage uh, for the research consists, uh, consists on an interview phase with some of the surveyed projects uh, because it is interesting to collect information that allows us to better understand the causes that give rise to these small variations between educational fields as well as, as to deepen the knowledge of the use that has been made of ICT with the students in the projects and their impact. Thank you very much for your interest and I'd be happy to reply any questions that you may have regarding the, pap the paper and presentation. Here you can find my contact details.